Nikola Jokic is the best center in the game of basketball, and if you won't take it from me, Hakeem Olajuwon echoed that sentiment recently by saying this about Joel Embiid. He's got all the moves, but leveraging the moves is different. Why would he be shooting threes? Hakeem then said this about Jokic. His shot, his fakes, they're very difficult to time. You don't know when he's faking and when it's real. He has tricks, he's the one. That depiction from the back-to-back -back champion in the mid-90s, a player in Hakeem who's widely regarded as the most skilled big man ever, comes on the heels of the soon-to-be three-time MVP in Jokic, fueling Denver to the first seed in the West. They also have a double-digit win over the dangerous second-seeded Memphis Grizzlies. Despite not being known as a great defender, Nikola Jokic is currently number one in defensive box plus minus, and throughout his career, Nikola's racked up game-saving blocks against my Raptors, the Warriors, the Pelicans, and the Rockets. Playing the fourth most amount of minutes among five men, I know Nikola's defensive rating does just rank at number 11 among centers, but with groundbreaking sentiments from the Joker like this, If you wanna uh, win a championship, you, got, you gotta play defense. He's evidently been motivated, which has improved Denver's defensive rating to 5th best in the NBA over the last 10 games. Over that span, Nikola's the 3rd most valuable high usage center on defense, only behind Nick Claxton and Bam Adebayo. Jokic is probably never going to be the most elite of centers defensively. That last stat though, proves he's showing improvements as of late. Not even 28 years old, the second half of Jokic's career could see him unleash ridiculous upside if he's willing to get in the best shape of his life while continuing to use the agility ladder. Easier said than done, but Prime Nikola is going to be a sight to behold if he can up his defense to an elite caliber level. For the time being, whatever Jokic gives up defensively is made up for by the fact that with this dime to KCP, he just became the Nuggets franchise leader in all-time assists. He passed the great Alex English, by the way. Jokic also makes up for any slight shortcomings defensively, which he knows he has to improve by ranking second only behind Luka Doncic in total 30-point triple-doubles this season. Still, I think Nikola's defense is undervalued. Stay tuned for more on that, as well as more facts about the Joker. Jokic and his deep group of nuggets are destined for something special, though, with the underappreciated Jamal Murray, who's amazingly bounced back from his ACL tear, a combo forward in Aaron Gordon, who's built up mesmerizing chemistry with the Joker, the lethal 29-year-old Georgia product and the former NBA champion, Contavious Caldwell-Pope, who's second among all players in three-point percentage, another solid free agent pickup from last summer in the versatile Bruce Brown, or Denver having the most consistent version of former number one ranked player coming out of high school, Michael Porter Jr., who's been exceptional on both ends of the court, all gives Nikola an array of versatile weapons around him. Jokic is a player who many label as overrated at this point in his career given he's taken home the last two MVPs, but like the greatest players ever are equipped with, Jokic has an amazing system in Denver to work with in terms of their well-suited personnel for the combo forward 3 and D based modern game, and in terms of the coaching staff with the top man in charge with the ear of this team to the fullest extent in Mike Malone, showing the strength of the coaching staff in general. After being placed on health and safety protocol, Malone was replaced by assistant David Adelman, who stepped up and led the Nuggets to a victory. As I mentioned in my last Nuggets video, the vibes 1 through 15 on this roster are at the highest level they could possibly be at. Guys are quite simply getting along, and an assistant suddenly stepping into the main voice and decision maker and nothing changing is a pretty good sign in terms of this roster's chemistry. The Mile High City is watching their basketball club tear through the association and currently on an 8 game winning streak. Even with the Grizzlies currently on an 11 gamer, you can't help but think Memphis is looking in their rear view a little bit considering they took a 14 point L to Denver a little while back. Nevertheless, the Nuggets and Grizzlies have established themselves as the two top dogs out west, but of course, we've still got a ton of season to go, so things could change. Things won't change, however, if Nikola's playing defense like he is in this game we're about to look at, where along with dropping one of six 30-plus point triple doubles, he racked up a season-high four blocks. Vanderbilt's gonna get a taste of what it's like to attack Jokic as the last line of defense on the fast break. Nikola's gonna slow down around the three-point line to lure Jared into the drive, then he sprints diagonally on a downhill he'll slope to cut off every one of Jared's angles, leaning back just a tad and winding up for the clean swap. This time catching Vanderbilt looking silly in the half court, following the OK Abaje miss as Kelly Olenek pulls off the nice save. The two-handed jump stop to his offhand from Jared just isn't going to cut it. 
desperate yet under control closeout to affect Olenek's follow through from Jokic right here. Next play, Christian Brown funnels Nikhil Alexander-Walker into the help of Nikola, but Nikhil's pump fake sheds the rookie. Luckily, Nikola swiftly stunts from Walker onto another Walker like it's the Walking Dead in Kessler for the beastly stuff on the backside. Let's flash back to the most dramatic defensive stance of Nikola's career in the 2021-22 season. The post-pandemic showdown was capped off by this initial stunt out to Daniel Tice, which the baseline cutter Jay Sean Tate falls for, and that leads him into getting his shot sent flying 15 feet into the air. That was one of four game-winning blocks for Nikola over the last couple years, which you never hear anyone talking about. Instead, it's all about how this man's a liability on defense. I think that's completely unfair. Is he going to look like that DPOY type dude every night? Absolutely not, but performances like the one we just looked at against Utah display the untapped potential the only entering his prime Jokic can at times show you. Nevertheless, it's not a hot take to say Jokic is debatably the best player on planet Earth. An advanced stat king, Nikola's first this season in player efficiency rating plus minus, box plus minus, win shares, win shares per 48 minutes, value over replacement. Those stats, along with the defensive box plus minus thing I mentioned in the intro, show you that Jokic is quite frankly the opposite of the blasphemous label that many place on his proverbial shoulders. Semi-transition, gravity-drawing, whirling dervishes like this one past Thomas Bryant, leading to nasty wraparound one-handed finesse drop-offs as such, have a way of making you trust that Jokic is always going to get it done for you offensively. Fittingly, in that game against LA, the Joker became the first player in NBA history to record 10-plus points, 10-plus rebounds, and 15-plus assists while shooting 100% from the field within a game. Is Jokic overrated or underrated? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shout. Out. Today's Community Speak shoutout goes to Dylan Popoff, who says, I'll be back on the D-Flow grind once football's done, but I have to watch the video regarding my Sixers. If Embiid stays 100% healthy, they can definitely win a championship. Pause to read the rest of that great take. Thanks for the shoutout within the shoutout from Dylan. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.